um, for some of us who dropped questions that are similar to other people's questions, I may have to skip some questions because of time. Okay, um, this person says, um, why would you, what would you do for a man who keeps late nights or even passes the night outside sometimes with friends in the name of maintaining friendship? I still have to deal with that today in church. Um, it's a common thing. Report him. Somebody needs to talk sense to him. He doesn't understand he's now a husband. He still thinks he's one of the boys. So he needs to be retrained mentally. You can't just go outside and stay till late or go outside and sleep over. Those are, it's forbidden for a married man that has children to do that. I was telling them today in church that I play snooker. I have went somewhere near my house where I go to play pool, snooker. And they know me there once around 8 o'clock. If, if it gets to 8 o'clock, hardly do I stay there at 8 o'clock. Once it gets to 8 o'clock, I go home. And they're always like, ah, you just came. The game is just starting because for most guys, around 8, the groove is just starting. I said, no, I need my kids to be seeing me before they sleep. You know, not that some, some parents, the way you, you, some husbands, they get home. You always get home at 10, 11. Your kids have slept. They don't see you morning, Monday to Friday except Saturdays. You are, you are a weekend parent. You know, so I, teach, I try to teach that. It's important, do what you need to do, but get back home. It's important your kids see you on a daily basis. Let them know you're a human being that lives in that house, not a visitor. So they need to be trained to know that. How do I cope with a difficult spouse, a man? Always right and never wrong. Help, my emotional tank is empty. My husband never appreciates me nor spends time with me. I feel neglected and unappreciated. Being a wife, mother, and career woman is overwhelming. Please, how can I balance all and not lose myself in the process? I would need you to understand that all these questions were submitted by people in this room. Okay, so... Um, so the person I'm, is here. I'm trying to pick who the person is. <laughs> okay, so this is interesting because this week I did a blog post on what they never tell us when we're getting married. Yeah. You no, know, as women, when you get married, just say you marry, be patient. They never really tell you the things you're going to encounter. And one of the few, one of the things I've discovered is, um, apart from the fact that when you, when you get married, the man expects to be treated like a king, you know. Another thing is the fact that um, women expect that their husbands will make them. Your, hap, your, husband, your husband cannot make you happy. I know it's not what we like to hear, but your husband cannot. It is too much responsibility to put on another human being. Jesus is the only one that can satisfy all your needs, and he even had to die first. So there's no way another human being a man. We put, that's why I said we build our world around, so you, you get your, your acceptance, you get your self-esteem, you get so, so he can just take it all away, just by one action. Mm. So you cannot get joy and satisfaction. See, marriage is not a reward. It's an assignment. We, we think that I'm getting married so that this guy can make me happy. No, you're going there to work. Marriage is work. The sooner you realize it, the better for you. You won't have unnecessary expectations when you realize that this is a job. It's like saying you are going to work in the morning on Monday morning and your boss does not make you happy. I don't, I don't understand. So you're not going to work today because your, your, your boss did not wish you happy birthday. It, 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 it's only, when, you, when you have that mindset that I'm here to work, you will realize that this is not the best that's going to make me happy. Yes, it's a byproduct. Maybe God can bless you, and yes, your husband will make you happy. But your, your first satisfaction and everything must come from God. Because you're expecting it, and it's not coming, that's why you are emotionally drained. You need to get your peace, your satisfaction, your joy from God. The one he gives is Jara. It's just bonus. But if you put everything on him, he came back today with feeling sad, so my, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, in fact, if you, if you hit 45, I'll be surprised. Because you'll be drained. And, when you're, and we, unfortunately, women are wired emotionally. So once the, when you're emotionally drained, every other thing, sickness starts. You start feeling physically sick. You start having migraines. A lot of times, when you hear women say, oh, my head, this side of my head, this side of my head, it's an emotional problem. It's not medical. It's emotional. So you need to first realize that everything will come from, it must come from God first. Your peace, your satisfaction, your joy. And men need space. Give him, have a life. Besides just being a wife, who are you? A lot of times when women get married, you're nobody. You're just his wife. You must be somebody. You must be a human. You must be able to define who you are. What gives you joy besides your husband? Because he's your assignment. At least that's the way I see it. Thank you very much. What can be done um, when a married couple who are madly in love with each other, they care for one another, but the sexual satisfaction is not there? Most especially with the woman. 
who has had to cheat on her husband with another man to be sexually satisfied. But they are madly in love with each other. Okay. Um, they will need to communicate what exactly, how exactly is the satisfaction not coming? Are there things the guy is not doing or is not doing right? Can he learn to do those things? So that's where the issue is. And then she too needs to renew her mind. The way, the way our minds work, as long as she's having some kind of expectations and dreams or experiences she's expecting, she will never be satisfied. Um, so she has to renew her mind and focus on what she does have. Um, you know, so I'm sure part of what is affecting her is maybe she was heavily sexually active before and she has had some experiences that this guy is not meeting up to. She has to renew her mind and forget the past, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing for the ones which are forward. So they should communicate what does he need to do more. Then he can learn. She should work with him to develop it. If you understand that there's no other place I'm going, eh? you will get happiness. It's when you believe that there's something else somewhere. It has a way of removing your happiness you know, from what you do have. Very important. Um, I was just with somebody today. I have, a sport, I have a muscle car. It's like a sports car. It's called the Ford Mustang. It's a V8 car, 5.0 and everything. Beautiful car. When I first bought it, I was in America when I bought it, two weeks, I loved the car. I mean, I couldn't drive any other car because other cars were too slow for me. I loved that car. I couldn't drive my wife's car then. It was just slow, flat. I mistakenly drove that my Jaguar, I mean, that my Ford to a Jaguar shop. Then I test, drove a sports car Jaguar. I asked them to trade in my Ford. That how much extra, if you take my Ford, how much extra will I put for them to give me this Jaguar? I was two weeks old car. I was willing to sell it because I tried something else. Mm. So mm. she renew her mind and focus on her own marriage mm. and leave I the Jaguar. Think, I think outside. you can learn sex. Mm. Wait, wait, let's, let's listen to this. Mm. Yes, I think you can learn sex. You, okay. know, you can learn what works. So rather than going to look for it outside and... I don't know. I don't know if she was satisfied, you know. But the guilt that comes with that satisfaction it will easily evaporate the satisfaction yeah. she got outside. So it's easier for you to just let your husband. If he's doing, you know, if he's doing something you don't like, so instead of saying, "Ah, oh, is that what is that how they told you they do it?" You know, you take his hand, put it where it should be, teach him, yeah. or you moan louder when he's doing something teach nice. Him. Teach him. You guys yes. can learn. Yes. Which is the original plan that God had in the first place. And she must unlock her mind from wherever it is. <laughs> if her mind is somewhere else. So. Even the man saw that Jaguar, like she has to Jaguar. This one, <laughs> Even the man saw assault, her mind is there. He's nowhere human being, so he, she needs to renew her mind. If she doesn't renew her mind, she's not going to succeed at it. Mm. She needs to change that her thinking. All right. This person says, my husband and I used to be such great friends before we got married. We talk about everything and anything, and we confide so much in each other. But gradually after the wedding, we just drifted apart. Now we barely share anything important together. I don't even know his friends anymore, and he seems to have a lot of them, and they are all female. And I'm not sure what to do and how to be his best friend again. I think life just happens. They allowed life gets in the way, you know. The same way, you know, you build friendship, you started out as friends, you can start all over again. It starts with communication. Sit down, talk about it, let him know how you feel. Sometimes the woman feels that way, the man doesn't. So he might not even know there's anything going on. So they need to sit down and talk about it and then they say yeah. and then the things he's in you know, the things he's interested in. Yeah. That might be a good place to start. start yeah. So if he's interested in football, it might be nice to just sit beside yeah. him when he's watching the match, ask a couple of questions. Try not to ask unintelligent questions that will distract from the match. That man standing there, what is it? Don't be all those kind of things. <laughs> you, you you can be saying, ah, uh, uh, was that offside? Why did they you can do those kind of things and he will first look at you like, eh, okay. Then he can start, you know, so he can build from there. But I, I, I don't think that um, just keeping quiet about it is going to change anything. They need to start. You need to start yeah, from somewhere. need to work on it. What do I do when, okay, I want us to deal with it. So I say, let's talk. I talk, and this person is not cooperating. Meaning that he doesn't see the problem. The person is not it. even ready to talk, does not see the big deal in what I'm talking about. Or sometimes it goes spiritual on me. Okay, souls are perishing. We have a life to build. You are talking about sex. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, oh, I mean, there are some people that are that spiritual. I mean, and she liked him when she married him. That he was that spiritual. It, well, he wasn't that spiritual when he got married, <laughs> but he was growing spiritually. As he's growing spiritually, Hallelujah. the things of the flesh now belong to Hallelujah. the flesh. Hallelujah. As cliche as it sounds, I believe a lot in prayer. Most Christians underestimate the power of prayer. All right, there are some things really. Eh, there's nothing 
you can physically do marriage. about it. There are some things like that. You can't do anything. You just go and sit down, pray, and wait on God to start touching his heart and opening the doors. If you, there's nothing you can do physically. Because the more you try to talk to him, the more he doesn't want to talk. So, I believe in prayer. This one is very touchy. I suspect my husband has a past life as a gay, which is discuss, which is disturbing our marriage now. He is almost never interested in sex. I always have to ask. The one time I tried waiting for him, I waited seven months. Wow. I had to swallow my pride and ask. My sister. I have never denied him sex, yet it happens once in two months if I am lucky. Wow. He hasn't kissed me in a year. He rushes over foreplay, thereby making sex painful and would rather caress his manhood himself. Wow. Because I never get it right. Wow. I have tried everything from submission to role play to seduction, dialogue and prayer. He prefers to spend time alone in the bathroom after sex and I wonder if he's masturbating. He refuses yeah. to seek counsel. I am frustrated and my self-esteem is dependent on the regular compliments I get from men outside. Otherwise, I would think myself totally undesirable. Pastor Shego keeps reminding ladies to worship. But here I am with a man with no regard for the instruction not to deprive one another. Please address him. He's listening. What can be done um, when a married couple who are madly in love with each other, they care for one another, but the sexual satisfaction is not there, most especially with the woman who has had to cheat on her husband with another man to be sexually satisfied? But they are madly in love with each other. Okay. Um, they will need to communicate what exactly, how exactly is the satisfaction not coming? Are there things the guy is not doing or is not doing right? Can he learn to do those things? So that's where the issue is. And then she too needs to renew her mind. The way, the way our minds work, as long as she's having some kind of expectations and dreams or experiences she's expecting, she will never be satisfied. Um, so she has to renew her mind and focus on what she does have. Um, you know, so... I'm sure part of what is affecting her is maybe she was heavily sexually active before and she has had some experiences that this guy is not meeting up to. She has to renew her mind and forget the past, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing for the ones which are forward. So they should communicate what does he need to do more. Then he can learn. She should work with him to develop it. If you understand that there's no other place I'm going, eh? you will get happiness. It's when you believe that there's something else somewhere. It has a way of removing your happiness you know, from what you do have. Very important. Um, I was just with somebody today. I have, a sport, I have a muscle car. It's like a sports car. It's called the Ford Mustang. It's a V8 car, 5.0 and everything. Beautiful car. When I first bought it, I was in America when I bought it, two weeks. I loved the car. I mean, I couldn't drive any other car because other cars were too slow for me. I loved that car. I couldn't drive my wife's car then. It was just slow, flat. I mistakenly drove that my Jaguar, I mean, that my Ford to a Jaguar shop. Then I test, drove a sports car Jaguar. I asked them to trade in my Ford. That how much extra, if you take my Ford, how much extra will I put for them to give me this Jaguar? I was two weeks old car. I was willing to sell it because I tried something else. Mm. So mm. she renew her mind and focus on her own marriage mm. and leave I the Jaguar outside. I think outside. you can learn sex. Mm. Wait, wait, let's, let's listen to this. Mm. Yes, I think you can learn sex. You, okay. know, you can learn what works. So rather than going to look for it outside and... I don't, know, I don't know if she was satisfied, you know, but the guilt that comes with that satisfaction it will easily evaporate the satisfaction yeah. she got outside. So it's easier for you to just let your husband... If he's doing, you know, if he's doing something you don't like, do you instead of saying, ah, is, that what, is that how they told you they do it? You know, you take his hand, put it where it should be, teach him, yeah. or you moan louder when he's doing something teach nice, him. teach him. You guys yeah, can let... Yes. Which is the original plan that God had in the first place. And she must unlock her mind from wherever it is. If her mind is somewhere else... So. Even the man, so that Jaguar, like she has the Jaguar. to this one, <laughs> Even the man, some assault, her mind is there. He's nowhere human being, so he, she needs to renew her mind. If she doesn't renew her mind, she's not going to succeed at it. Mm. She needs to change that, her thinking. All right. This person says, my husband and I used to be such great friends before we got married. We talk about everything and anything, and we confide so much in each other. But gradually after the wedding, we just drifted apart. Now we barely share anything important together. I don't even know his friends anymore. And he seems to have a lot of them, and they are all female. And I'm not sure what to do and how to be his best friend again. I think life just happens. They allowed life gets in the way, you know. 
the same way you know you built friendship you started out as friends you can start all over again it starts with communication sit down talk about it let him know how you feel sometimes the woman feels that way the man doesn't so he might not even know there's anything going on so they need to sit down and talk about it and then they say, yeah. and then the things he's in you know the things he's interested in yeah that might be a good place to start Stop. yeah so if he's interested in football it might be nice to just sit beside yeah. him when he's watching the match ask a couple of questions. Try not to ask unintelligent questions that will distract from the match. That man standing there, what is it? Don't be all those kind of things. <laughs> you, you, you can be saying, ah, ah, was that offside? Why did they... You can do those kind of things and he will first look at you like, eh, okay. Then he can start, you know, so he can build from there. Mm. But I, I, I don't think that um, just keeping quiet about it is going to change anything. They need to start. You need to start yeah, from somewhere. Need to work on it. What do I do when, okay, I want us to deal with it. So I say, let's talk. I talk and this person is not cooperating. Meaning that he doesn't see the problem. The person is not it. even ready to talk, does not see the big deal in what I'm talking about. Or sometimes it goes spiritual on me. Okay, souls are perishing. We have a life to build. You are talking about sex. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I mean, there are some people that are that spiritual. I mean. And she liked him when she married him, that he was that spiritual. It, well, he wasn't that spiritual when he got married. The but he was growing the spiritually, as he's growing spiritually, Hallelujah. the things of the flesh now belong to Hallelujah. the flesh. Hallelujah. As cliche as it sounds, I believe a lot in prayer. Most Christians underestimate the power of prayer. All right, there are some things really, eh? There's nothing you, you can physically do marriage. about it. There are some things like that. You can't do anything. You just go and sit down, pray, and wait on God to start touching his heart and opening the doors. If you, there's nothing you can do physically. Because the more you try to talk to him, the more he doesn't want to talk. So, I believe in prayer. This one is very touchy. I suspect my husband has a past life as a gay, which is discuss, which is disturbing our marriage now. He is almost never interested in sex. I always have to ask. The one time I tried waiting for him, I waited seven months. Wow. I had to swallow my pride and ask. My sister. I have never denied him sex, yet it happens once in two months if I am lucky. Oh. He hasn't kissed me in a year. He rushes over foreplay, thereby making sex painful and would rather caress his manhood himself wow. because I never get it right. Wow. I have tried everything from submission to role play to seduction, dialogue and prayer. He prefers to spend time alone in the bathroom after sex and I wonder if he's masturbating. He refuses yeah. to seek counsel. I am frustrated and my self-esteem is dependent on the regular compliments I get from men outside. Otherwise, I would think myself totally undesirable. Pastor Shego keeps reminding ladies to worship, but here I am with a man with no regard for the instruction, not to deprive one another. Please address him. He's listening. I'm looking at you right now. It's a part of the service where I wish I could tell everybody, close your eyes. If you are the man, raise up your hand. I'm, no, the spirit is pointing at him. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I think we should look at this from two perspectives. Can we truly address the issue of somebody who is struggling with his sexual orientation? Because like this woman is saying, that might be the case. And because we are in Nigeria, we are a religious environment, but, people you know, would rather marry and find a way around it than to stick out of the but crowd. But at the same time, it might not be... So men are just sexually lazy. As I don't know if it's just... Seven months. Yes. Oh, but this one is more than lazy. Only some men are... You know, there are some women, there are some married women who speak to me about things like this. And my husband never initiates sex. If I say to I want to wait, I will wait forever. And it's not that he's gay, you know. I don't know if this is the case that this man is gay. But there are situations where the person is not gay. He's just sexually lazy. And as he gets older, he gets worse. He becomes more laid back. He's not interested. So the wives have tried everything. In some cases, they're even turned down. At least this one, when you try, he sleeps with you. They are turned down. So you try to say, I'm not in the mood. Every time you are not in the mood. You know, so I, I don't know if it is that he's gay or that he's sexually lazy because that's two entirely different issues. If it is that he's gay, PK will address it. If it's that he's sexually lazy, PK will still address it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's, it's, it's kind of a serious thing. And like I said, you know, those, this, those habits have a way of affecting your marriage. So it's either he's heavy on masturbation or he's gay. You know, those things will affect. 
you know, uh, in some people's cases, not even masturbation or gay, maybe they, they have somebody else satisfying them somewhere. Mm. You know, if a guy's not having sex for months and months and months, he's having sex. He's just not having sex with you. He's either having sex with himself or with somebody else. Uh, most men won't, won't go four or five months without sex. It's not normal. Anybody that can go four or five months without sex at all is sick. Is sick totally. Pregnant. No, we don't know from... You know, so... Because some men stay off sex when their wives are pregnant. Yeah, some men are totally not attracted to their wives when she's pregnant or when she so just gave birth. That's another one. You know, and I still don't know what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> so, what do you say to this man? To this man, to the man himself. Sure, do your job yes, now, bros. You know, do um, sex in marriage is is is, is a duty. It's, it's something God has asked you to do. That's part of what you signed in for. So, um, even if you are not in the mood, you must do it. To, even even for me, even till now, we still sometimes I have sex. I'm not in the mood, but I know my wife is in the mood. I'll do. I'll have sex, and I'll I'll do it wholeheartedly. I won't do it with half mind. Sometimes too, I'm in the mood and she's not in the mood. As a married couple, you have beautiful sex and you have dutiful sex. Mm. There are two. No, please, sir. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as a married couple, you have beautiful sex and you have dutiful sex. So beautiful sex when both of you are in the mood, the passion is right, everything is right, no kids anywhere disturbing, everything you have all the time in the world. That's fine. Dutiful sex is when one party wants it, the other party is totally not in the mood. Totally has other serious issues they are thinking about. There might be work stress, children stress, rent stress, any other stress. But this is your duty in marriage. So you will play along and you will actually give it your full commitment yes, to you pleasure think. your spouse. It's part of what marriage is about serving each other. So you don't you always wait till you're in the mood. And 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 even if you are gay, in fact, if you are gay and you are married, it means you are bisexual, you're not even gay. Because you'll be having sex with my go ahead and give your full attention and do your duty while we are still trying to cure uh, the other one. Don't let your wife be suffering that one with you. Then seek help. You must seek help with the gay thing. If you are gay, we all know scripturally is wrong. So we're not condemning you as a person. Nobody hates you. We're not condemning you. But you know that this habit is just not godly and it seeks to destroy you. So seek help. Pastors and counselors are people that love you and will protect you. They won't share your story. They'll protect you and help you. Trust me, there's nothing any average pastor that has passed more than five years has not heard. We have heard all kinds of things, and we have seen all kinds of things. So the, your story is not going to be new. So sit with pastor. Let them start a program or a process to help you recover. But while you're at it, please do your husbandly duties. All right? Don't rush through foreplay. Dutiful sex, you're going to do everything with your whole heart. The full nine yards, with the full commitment. All right, even though you are not in the mood. Why do we laugh indulgently at men when they claim not to be romantic but rebuke women who don't like sex? Romance is a good precursor to sex, yet the man doesn't give compliments, can't look at his wife in the eye and say, I love you, has not touched her in ages, doesn't caress or give her meaningful touches, can't hold her in public or private, comes home with office work, skips foreplay, yet wants superlative sex. Is a cheat and a joker. Mm -hmm. But she has already answered she's herself. Venting. It's not a question. She's this one is just venting. making a statement of fact. It's true. Um, most guys are clueless. So women, you need to know this. Most men are not emotionally developed like you. They are totally relationship, um, you know, JJCs. So they don't know all these things. They don't know about how you do foreplay, how you start caressing a woman mentally and emotionally before you even start touching her physically. They don't know all those things. So they need to be taught. So that's why meetings like this are good. And more and more of it, he should buy books, attend seminars or in church, think like he should be taught so that they will learn how to, you know, gradually um, woo a woman even though she's your wife. So most men are clueless. That's the honest truth. So they need to be taught. All right? So don't, don't take it personal. Don't be angry with him. He's just being clueless. So um, pray and also let find a way to be getting the knowledge to him. He needs to be trained, basically. He's clueless. I think Pastor Mildred will want to take this. His personal hygiene in the house is 10%. I hate dirt. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know exactly what the question is. Is the question, should she... Hygiene is that is uh, the man is dirty. Hygiene, hey, so no, ten percent. How, how do you deal with that? Him being dirty. Yes, yes. and she is into neatness. It's obviously um, the health inspector. Does mm. he... <laughs> See some of these things. Eh? Why I'm laughing is when people get married. I wonder, like before you get married, I wonder what you what you really talk about. 
you know. Some of these things will show now before you get married, don't you think? I don't, I, at least I think so. Some of us men know how to hide some of these things. Yes, yeah, so we'll package. we package. Before. <laughs> Especially we Christian men, because... So um, I would date you for one year, I will know that you don't bath every day. No, I have my bath when I'm going to see you or when you're coming. Mm-hmm. So you're not my friend now, because if I call PK, you tell me, I say, wait till they do, so I never bath, I day out. So I know, I say, this one way you know they bath every day. It's all, t- it's everything okay. They say, I'm not going anywhere now. Men don't bath. Mm. We talk about it like that. Yeah. Then I will know what to, to expect, you know, when I get married. And then there are some things you start negotiating from. Because the truth of the matter is that when you get married, like my husband said, there are little, there's little or nothing you can do about some things. Mm. You know, if you tell him to go have his bath, he can say no. So are you going to beat him? So how, do you so cope? how do you cope with such a man? You are just. So that's you can do what things to Christ. That's you are adaptable. You are just. Mm. You just make sure that it doesn't repeat. Because you see, you can't train your husband. There's no, there's no way. You can't train your husband. It's your children you can train. Your job is to love him and train your children. Not train your husband and love your children, mm. which is what most of us do. So by the time you are getting married to a man, it's already too late. Yeah. It's, or, it's way too late. So if, he's, if he doesn't have his bath, can you negotiate that when we wa- want to have sex, can you bath? Mm, or let's go and bath. Let's, or let's go and bath, exactly. We can, we can start from there. Yes. Sir. Yeah, we can start from there. Let's go and bath together. We can start the whole foreplay from there. But if, if you, I don't think there's really much you can do. Then, let, see, learn to talk to men in nice atmospheres. Plant seeds in their hearts. If he's a godly man, God can always water that seed. So, men so have... from time to time, be telling him that, you are sexual, more sexually aroused when he has his bath. Just drop it, drop in it as a hint. Sometimes women mm. drop hints and men don't get it. Yeah, but this one you keep dropping by faith. <laughs> the Bible says, cast your seed. You don't know the one that was going to bring. Uh, so when does, when does dropping. dropping the hints become nagging? nagging. Exactly. Oh, be dropping it. Give it as long as there's enough spacing between the two dropping. <laughs> keep dropping it. Then, like the honest truth, the honest truth is that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You will manage. That's the honest truth. Some things you are complaining about, there's nothing you are going to do. If he doesn't bath, you will still have sex with him. You will now. You won't say you will block everywhere and no sex. If you do that, you will face a different set of problems you have well, not experienced. Well, if still try to brush his teacher. Mm. Okay. Um, it's true. That thing is very hard, though, to kiss a man that has not brushed. No, you should go and brush. All of you should go and brush. Yeah, but some person. men are just dirty. Yeah. So what do we do? Because I've had, this, I've, I've had these questions, women throw these questions at me. See, there are ways you can say it. Say, honey, I want to kiss you, please, can you brush? <laughs> He'll be thinking more of the kiss, not the brush. Okay. No, no but really, would that work? Let's ask men in the room. See, you... It you, will work. Yes, now. That I want, to, I want to kiss you, please go and brush. Yes. Only one, thank you. Me to work or for me, I'll be, more, I'll be more interested in the kissing. Anything it takes. So I'll go and brush. Whatever it takes. Mm. All right. As a woman, learn to take your stand, learn to talk. Oh. You can't... Uh, be pretending that it's going to work. You Sub- submission is not slavery. Yeah, talk a bit. Share. Okay. Not, not in a fight, forceful or not, rebellious yeah. way, but share what you want. Sometimes, like I said, the man is clueless. He doesn't know. That's mm. true. Okay. We just assume he does. Doesn't Since we are in this um, neighborhood, what do you say about anal sex? Some say it's right, some say it's wrong. What's your take? Okay. Um, I, I, we, we personally don't um, dig it or believe in it. Um, because I hear that health-wise it's not so safe. But, um, you know, the honest... Tr- and besides, um, the part of the body you use for that, we all know what it's used for. So it's not necessarily very palatable or pleasant. So we don't like it. However, I still insist there's no clear scriptural do's or don'ts in your sex bed. And it is intentional. God intentionally did not enter there to come and tell you what to do. He wants two of you to enjoy yourselves. If that's what two of you say you must do, and both of you want to do it, who am I to enter your sex bed and be doing um, movie director? It's not. It's, it's not okay. so, but I, I don't dig it. I think health is not so yeah. good, personally, if you ask me. You know, so we don't dig it. We don't, we don't do it. But, um, I think draw the line with anything that is medically wrong yes, unsafe. or anything that causes pain or yeah. discomfort or shame, shame to the other person. Yes, once it's say, crossing those it. lines... Sure. But like I said, I know that there are people. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that some people, as we are all talking here now and are doing, it's not they passed our <laughs> The generation after us, the things they are already doing. Trust me, you don't want to hear. You do not want to even use your ear to hear it. So a time is coming. This debate will no longer be a debate. That's what I'm telling you. Mm. 
So it's, it's, it's for me, it's very clear. It's very, it's very um, 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 clear because God intentionally did not go into your sex bed for a reason. He said, anything you, both of you would like, as long as you remain, it's between two of you and you're married, it's fine. All right. My yeah. wife seems to prioritize our children and job over me. Yeah. I feel left out. Yeah. How do I deal with this and not lose my mind? It's a common problem, honey. I think you should just talk to her. A lot of times women don't know that they're doing these things. So talk to her about it. And sometimes, can you get help, help out too? Because I remember with. that with, um, with, with David, or was it David? One of the kids, you know, I seemed a bit distracted. I didn't know. I didn't know I was doing it. He told me. He said, ah, that you are worshipping these children. You know? <laughs> you know, he would just drop hints. And I'm wondering, I was just like, why would you say that? He said, because I've been talking to you about one thing in the past few weeks, and you haven't even heard me. And you know, that just kind of you know, put a check on what I was doing. And as a man, it's really easy to deal with things. You are the head of the home. Yeah, Usually yeah. women are not just mad and just shouting at you. Yeah. Just let her know in a nice Talk way. To Talk to her. She'll listen. Because our last born is a, bo- is a boy and he looks like me, so she keeps mixing up. You are just jealous. <laughs> she talks he was he's jealous me. of that um, boy. I don't I have, understand. How to put things straight now. You, you guys, or else I send one of you out of this house. You actually sent him out of our room. <laughs> And he was just sleeping in our room in the middle of our bed. You know what that means? I said, my brother, let him relocate to his own room. I'm not even going to go there with you. Because our first daughter still comes into that room every night. We wake up in the morning and she's between us. Oh, and he doesn't say anything. <laughs> All right. My husband does not share the same bed with me. I feel so worthless. Seriously? No, I don't know what this guy is. What's the problem? I don't understand why so women yes, need can. most women need to be cuddled they need the warmth so you cannot be sleeping in another room from your wife but this is a, to, a total a no no if there was a relationship police you'll be totally arrested. arrested and taken to court you know you cannot uh, be sleeping in women need to be cuddled most women sleep better see for your wife to live long and live well she needs non-sexual touch, touch. a lot of it yes. a lot of it a day so this can happen if she's in another room she needs to be able to roll and know that you are there. Yes. She needs to be able to talk to you when she needs to talk to you. So you can't have another. This is totally. You can. She can keep. You can keep your clothes into another. But you must be sleeping in the, same, the same place. Bed. Very important. Okay. All right. It helps the warmth. Two can't be warm if they don't sleep together. Some men believe they must sleep with their wives at every opportunity they are alone together. Won't this become boring and routine? How does one cope with this? No, it will not. Be. You, see, you see, that's the irony of life. Some people complain they don't get enough, and some, some people it's complain that it's too much. Human beings can't be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's duty, it's your duty. The, yes, These are the things you signed in for. Most people don't know what marriage they're entering. This is what you signed in for. If he wants it, then give it. It's what yeah, I was saying. I, honestly, I think that that's the problem. Marriage itself, a lot of people don't understand what it is. They just think it's the normal cycle but, that. Okay, but like I said, we need to always renew our minds. Do you know if this guy starts sleeping outside, this woman will not mind. She will say, well, Anytime you want, tell me. But right now, there's no problem. She's saying it's too much. I know women that are saying, If that's what will stop him from sleeping outside, I can be having sex in the morning now, night, twice a day. Do you understand? Sometimes we need to renew our mind. If you miss your flight, if your flight is delayed, you'll be upset. What if you enter the plane and there's an explosion? And it's everybody come down. You know, you'll be happy that flight is delayed mm. suddenly because your mind has just changed now. Mm. So sometimes the problem is just in our minds. We just think there's a big problem, but if there's a shift in your mentality, that thing that's a problem will become a good thing suddenly. Mm. If there's a shift. So have sex. Your own is you know, even have a problem. He wants to, he wants you that much. You are, you are that hot compliment. to him that he wants you. That's a compliment. A lot of ladies will envy you. They like to be in your shoes, to have their husband all over them like that. Not six months or seven months strike. And then I think yeah. that you should just find ways to make him more creative. Yeah. That's what he means to be a helper. So help him yeah. to make him more interesting. There's something let him have his bath with cold water too. So that he will cool down. Mm. Mm. All right. Let's take um, just two more <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um, we have more questions, but let's just take these last yeah. two questions because of time. Um, for a spouse who has cheated on their spouse, for a person who has cheated on their spouse before, must you tell your spouse about it? Is it okay to keep it secret to protect that spouse? Okay, you go first. Okay. Um, the truth is that when it comes to things like this, there's no yes or no answer. So I cannot say this is how to go about it. However, um, I would advise you still need some accountability in a case like this. So if you, for any reason you can't tell your spouse, at least be able to tell your pastor and you guys should start working at it from there. But the ideal thing is to be able to tell your spouse, all right? 
but like I know, um, the impact sometimes um, will be great. So for me, I don't think it's a yes or no answer. It depends on the scenario you are in. So that's what I feel. But I'm sure she has a different opinion. Yes. <laughs> I have a very different opinion because I don't, I don't believe in secrets in marriage. No mm-hmm. matter how bad it is, I don't think. And a lot of times, the one partner makes the decision for the other. They think you can't handle it. So they'll say, if I tell her, she may not be able to handle it. The truth of the matter is that you can't really say. Some people can. And then secrets always have a way of coming back to haunt you. So you, you can't live having something hanging over your head every day. And who knows, that person might decide to blackmail you. Anything can come up. So I, I would say, tell them, you know. You, you just have to, it just has to be a controlled environment. Maybe have a pastor or someone help break the news to them or something. But I, I wouldn't say keep secrets. I, I don't, I would never say keep secrets, never. Okay, all right. Um, let's take this finally. I know it's true that there shouldn't be sex before marriage. But what happens when you find out that it can't satisfy you after the, both of you are married. Like we said, sex is learned. I don't even know what you mean by it can't satisfy you. You can learn it. You can learn it. There's no one person manufacturing. It didn't, I mean, I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but I don't think they measured, when God was creating you, he now measured the guy's penis and says, this is the one that will fit you. No. I think it is, it's not necessary. Because most times when people say this, it's a concept of size. I don't think it's size. It's how to use it. So it can be learned. Sex can be learned. So the case of, and then another thing is, you know, maybe because you, you think you have something to compare it with. Yes, you must renew your mind. You've probably had sex you before. Have to renew your mind. So there's something, because if, if you've never eaten um, pepper soup before, the first pepper soup they give you is the standard. Is it standard now? So if you've never had sex before, your husband, whatever your husband does, is it? Maybe it's not, it's not perfect, but there's nothing to compare with. So I think the issue is that. We need to first of all, like my husband says, renew your mind. But I also think that it can be learned. So if you don't like something or you're enjoying something, let your partner know. This is, that's, there has to be communication in sex. You know, there has to be. You need to let them know this is it because that's the only way to get better. So if he's doing something you like, let him know. If he's doing something you don't like, let him know. All right. Um, finally, Pastor Mildred, I want you to look at all the women in this house. You have just one thing to say to them. What would that be? And then afterwards, Pastor K too. You want to speak to the men, I have just one thing to say to them. What would it be? No. <laughs> I'm not going first. I'm using you to think of my own. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, please. Ladies no, first. No, no. Ladies first. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah, ladies first. Uh, one thing. Just one thing. Wow. Uh, honestly. Hmm. One. <laughs> okay, in the next, say, three minutes, okay. express yourself. Okay, uh, that's more like it. <laughs> um, I would say have a life. For me, that's very important. Have a life. Besides the man, there must be something you are doing. A woman who has purpose is always more attractive. That you have something to come up and home and just your husband about. You know, have a life. Be a person. Because... He married a person, you know. He doesn't want to have to you lose that. that you know, th- that's what made you attractive in the first place. That's the first thing. Second thing, men need respect more than anything else. What we call love as women is not sure. He doesn't want another mother. He wants a wife. Somebody who respects him. Somebody who speaks highly of him. Somebody who inspires him. Somebody who almost worships him. Because he's a king, he should be treated like that. And then finally, I said it before, you know, love your husbands, train your children. Don't train your husband and love your children. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate her for that. All right. Thank you very much. My yeah. time. But on, on a serious note, um, if I had wanted to tell men or women or anybody, is take your relationship with God seriously. Um, um, my work with God has totally changed my life. I don't, I don't understand how people can claim to have an intimate relationship with God, and it doesn't impact every aspect of their life. How do you even get bored relating with God, the almighty God that is so creative, that is unending. He has no end. You know, so I just think a lot of people just don't, for them, Christianity is a religion. It's not a practical thing. And I don't understand how they do it. I think God is, is too real. He's too practical. He's too, he's too wise. He's too fun for you not to have a great life. In fact, like my wife said, marriage itself 
cannot even be the source of your whole joy it's a good part of your life but you need to have a life with god and that that impacts your marriage impacts your career impacts every other aspect of your life let god be at the center of your life a living relationship not a religious one a living relationship somebody you actually talk to all those women that are lonely and all that start by having that living relationship with god god will see you through whatever you are facing same thing with the man god will see you through the thing trying to pull you down god will actually see you through it if you walk with him so see him as a living being see him as real take him for his word i don't know why people don't they never take anything god says you just think oh this guy doesn't know what is going on as in really he's the creator of the heavens and the earth take him seriously walk with him relate with him talk to him he's real and i give you 101 percent guarantee your life can never be the same if you have a living relationship with god can never be the same so that's what i have to say. hallelujah all right um we, we started from here and i want us to round up with this um there are families dealing with um fertility challenges family dealing with all the problems and before we round up i just want us to pray for every family dealing with any challenge especially as it regards to having children i wish we had time but we couldn't take the totality of your story but i can give them a summary after eight years you adopted your first child okay after you adopted after six years and then eight years into the marriage you I, the way i like the way you said it you woke up one morning and found out you were pregnant um i believe there are so many people who desire such a miracle and we want to tap into that anointing tonight okay so okay i should pray first then you pray okay all right um we should just pray but that's what we want to do yes all right um father we thank you Lord, I speak to any man or woman here, any couple trusting you for fertility and fruitfulness. Even those that is not biological, they, are, they, they want fruitfulness in their finances or in other areas. I speak right now by the authority of God. I declare every barren womb to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you said in your word that none shall be barren in the land. I stand in agreement today with my wife. And with, with Pastor Shegun and the, the, the men and women of God in this house, I decree that none in this house shall be barren in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I speak to every organ in their bodies. I command them to come alive. Amen. I speak to those womb to carry babies Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. For that man that they've told that you have low sperm count, your sperm count cannot be lower than the one of Abraham. Abraham was dead and he still had a child. And, and you, you are still living. You are still young. I decree for that man become productive in the name of jesus from now i release healing upon your body Amen. you will carry babies Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. thank you father thank you Lord. we reject every negative doctor's report Amen. we reject every negative symptom we Amen. decree right now by the power of god that the babies are received Amen. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. 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 father in the name of jesus we thank you because we know that it is impossible for you to lie. You're not a man that you would lie, neither are you the son of man that you will relent. When you have said a word, it is settled forever. Your word says that none shall be barren. You say that we will not have a miscarriage and you will fulfill the number of our days. Your word also tells us that we are like fruitful vines in the very heart of our husband's houses. Father, we thank you because because of your word we declare today that there will be single births there will be multiple births in the name of jesus Amen. because i've seen you do this for me I, this is not a truth i have just heard but it is one that my hand has personally handled father i declare over everyone the same way you did a miracle for me that you will do for them in the name of jesus Amen. that the word will become flesh for them in the name Amen. of jesus as your word says be fruitful and multiply i declare that your bodies become obedient to the word of God by the end of this year there will be a tangible testimony Amen. tied to this night in the name of Jesus father we give you praise Hallelujah. we give you all of the glory Hallelujah. we thank you your credit is good with us yes. we'll praise you now for we know that you will do it for us Amen. for in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. 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 ladies and gentlemen please let's put our hands together and I appreciate pastor Kingsley and pastor